You played 20 Australian Opens. Actually, more. 20 in singles. You cut me short. What are you, 23, 24? (laughs) No, 22, I think. I missed one Ah. in the middle. Why? What happened that year? I had Lyme disease. Oh, right. I'm sorry. Actually, (laughs) cut that. I'm terrible. I'm a terrible person. You just have Lyme disease. Yeah. So that year you missed. (laughs) That year I did miss. But apart from that, I played many, yeah. Do you remember this tournament like as a kid and then, I mean, you obviously played it pretty young, yeah. but growing up and then getting the chance to actually walk out on court and be a, a competitor at the Australian Open. Oh yeah, I remember coming here as a kid. Um, Mum and dad brought our whole family here for a Cellus and Graf final. I wore my Steffi Graf outfit and Did everything. You? So yeah, that was like the best weekend of my life when I was like nine years old. So yeah, and then I, the next time I came back, I guess I was playing. Yeah. Wow. Still wearing the Steffi Graf outfit or? Um, Fortunately not. I got a new wardrobe when I was like 18. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) There we go. Ooh. Do you you know what match this is? No. This is. Well, I know that's Vanessa Webb. It is. Yeah. Is this this my first match? No, this is your second match. You beat Conchita Martinez in the first round. Okay. 2003. And then you get into the third round. Oh my gosh. Wow. And you were very, you had a great poker face throughout your whole career, but this is a very happy Sam right here. So I was 19. I think my first ever Aussie Open, I remember I played Greta Rahn in the first round. Mm. And I lost, and I was that excited at the prospect of playing Hingis in the second round. And that taught me not to look ahead and think about who you play in the next Who's round next? before you win. <laughs> so that was a good lesson. Can we just talk about the autograph at this stage in your career? Mm hmm. It's just literally it's you writing name. your name. Yeah. I don't know. It's, uh, I mean, it's probably not hugely different, but oh my God, it's so funny. <laughs> when you're a kid. And this would have been one of your first like big, big stages at, obviously in Australia, but mm-hmm. in really any tournament around the world. Oh yeah, for sure. By far. Yeah. I remember beating Conchi because that was like the best win I'd ever had, obviously. You were a wild card too. Okay, and then walking underneath, back in through to the, you know, underground bit. We got there after Conchi, and the security guard at the entrance told me, she goes, oh, she was very angry. She wrapped her racket around the post in the car park. No way. Yeah. No <laughs> so way. So I was like, oh, make Conchi <laughs> break her racket. You're like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so 2006, you make the fourth round, mm-hmm. have a great run, and take on Martina Hingis when she was kind of in her second iteration of being one of the top dominant players. Yeah, no, that was, I do remember playing her. It was, again, night match. Um, Obviously one of the best players of our sport for, you know, across generations. So that was pretty exciting to be in the fourth round playing there. I know we had a really long rally, I think, that was exciting. Yeah. I hope we had more than just one, but um, (laughs) I I, I think I really started to get into this match and was like, competitive in it which was obviously unreal against Mm. Martina. Yeah second set goes to a Mm tiebreak she wins at Mm 10-8. What's the feeling being on Laver and a night session match against Martina Hingis? Um, Oh again just excitement and and that uh, feeling of playing out that geez I threw my racket a lot when I was younger. Yeah you did. Um, Excitement of playing Again, night matches, it's what you dream of doing when you're a kid. Like, that's the moment that you want to have on centre court. And there were some of my friends who came and, um, yeah, supported me. So that was unreal. This is actually one of the matches I do remember throughout my career as being quite a highlight. Yeah. Why is that? In what way? Uh, I think because it was the first time I'd made it to the fourth round of a slam playing someone like Martina on centre court in that moment. One of the matches I have remembered, even though I didn't win, it was a, probably a, a big point in my career to then try and progress further. I mean, we just saw that group of fans. Um, you've been on a roller coaster at this tournament mm-hmm. for 24 years. Mm-hmm. What has the crowd support meant to you in that time? Oh, I mean, it's fantastic. Again, like you coming out, you're playing at home, which can bring its challenges, but then on mm-hmm. the flip side, you. You don't wish it to be any other way either. I've always loved playing here, even though it has been a bit tough at times. Um, Getting to play a Grand Slam in your home country, we're very lucky. One in four places that get to actually have that opportunity. I didn't realize this. You get to the final in 2006 with Lisa Raymond. Yep. And you said you've won the mixed. 
But in 2019 with Shang Shui, mm -hmm. you had never won an Australian Open women's doubles title. Yep. Yeah, I mean, 06 came within one point. And then, what's that, 06, 19, 13 years later, got another opportunity to actually play in the final. And yeah, we had an unbelievable run to get there. We beat Sinyakova and Krajikova, I think, six and six. We had a really long semi final. Um, and then, yeah, playing this match, we played great, got through it, and yeah, was just absolutely stoked that I eventually got the women's doubles title here that long after having my first chance. What was the mentality change, if you can think of it, from 06 to 19 in a final? Um, well, I guess 06, again, I was I played US Open 05, mm -hmm. Lisa and I had won, and then became really dominant through that rest of the year. So then 06, we were probably definitely the favourites to win, and we were winning. Like We were literally one point from winning the match um, and kind of that faded away. So. This one, we weren't the favourites going into the tournament by any means, I don't think. We were still being, obviously had success as a team. Um, this is the match point, I think. And uh, so, I don't know. I don't know what the difference in mentality was completely, but we worked it out and got through it. And yeah. This was actually pretty cool because my childhood coach, Nick Watkins, I worked with him up until I was about 13 or 14 or something. And then through this preseason, I didn't have anyone and I asked him to help me again. So he came to the Australian Open helping me. So that was actually kind of awesome in the fact that I'd had him coach me when I was little, hadn't coached me for so long and then happened to be there in the stands helping me when Chung Shui and I were able to win. So that was a pretty nice moment to have together. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. To have someone so impactful from your early years. Yeah. And you and Zhang Shui, you, I mean, the, the personalities couldn't be more different, but you just seem to vibe together. Yeah, we just, uh, I don't know, we played together on and off throughout many years and then through this period we're pretty much sole partners together, like exclusive partners. And um, we kind of just got better the more we played together. And our tennis also, I think, really complemented each other. She was amazing from the back of the court with her returns. I could try and do a little bit more up at net, my serve, her return. So we kind of had everything covered between us. So this is 2022 yep. and your final singles match. Yeah, that was um, a big, big day. Uh, mm. Going into this tournament through December, I actually wasn't sure if I wanted to play singles again. Um, I thought I was going to be done after US Open. I lost to Contivate in the first round. I really thought that was going to be my last singles match. And then uh, pre-season was coming through and I was a bit unsure about things and um, eventually decided, no, I'd, sorry, Dad. Um, <laughs> I'd, I'd like one more chance to play at home and uh, yeah, have that opportunity. So thankful I got the wild card and was able to really have this moment with my family there and obviously some very close people. So getting through the first round, I think it was the first time I'd come back from a set down in many, many years here. So to play um, in that on that day and in that moment was just phenomenal. And yeah, I was, I can't believe I actually didn't cry during the on-court stuff. So <laughs> that was fun. Stubsy pushing you to do a... <laughs> a lap. I'm glad I, you know, I guess believed in myself enough at that point in time to say, no, I want to put my hand up. I want to do this. I want to get out there one more time. And yeah, like I said, we're, I've had amazing moments here at the Australian Open. So to actually finish on my terms in singles and then later on, obviously a year later in doubles was, I'm, I'm glad I was able to live out that moment. Yeah. This is just last year. Mm -hmm. You and Maddie Ebden, obviously you, you had some great success in doubles after you stepped away from the singles court those last couple of years. But yep. this is your very final match on court three. Yeah, we uh, had some pretty fun moments together. Matt and I playing mixed a lot actually the last couple of years and um, wasn't the way I wanted it to end in the first round. But, you know, you never know with matches at sport. You some don't know when that last moment's going to be. But um, as it got close to being match point it was like mm, we're probably too far gone now for this to be a miraculous comeback it started getting you know a bit choked up thinking is this going to be the last point and and whatever else but um like again to have that moment here in australia playing with matt and then i lost it so um <laughs> yeah it was amazing mm. it was amazing having a 
full crowd out there on court three. Everyone stuck around and it was, yeah, just a moment that I'd never, you'd never know if you're going to get that as a athlete, um, I guess, yeah, to finish the way you want to. Do you feel like you look at that footage of 03 and obviously then 2023, I know there mm -hmm. are a lot of, there are a couple before and many in between, but yeah, how, how has this tournament shaped Sam Stoser as a person? Oh, that's a bit deep. Um, yeah, let's go. <laughs> I've got my popcorn, so I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah, I don't know. I guess my career sort of, in a lot of ways, started here. Obviously, you play other tournaments in Australia and whatever, but, um, you know, that first time being able to play Grand Slam and it's in your home country and everything else, it's kind of like, oh, the start, and you kind of feel like, oh, I've made it because you're there, even though at 18, there's still a long, long way to go and you have no idea what's ahead of you. Um, yeah, I guess it's kind of, yeah, the start of trying to do something that you've wanted to do your whole life. So, mm. um, yeah, and then, like I said, then to have that moment to finish here as well, I always wanted to finish at home and everything else. So to go from the start to the end and pretty much everything imaginable in between yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. I don't know if you're going to have any popcorn, but grab your popcorn. Mm -hmm. Cheers, Sam Stoser. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us on Cinema Sessions. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Of course.